Okay, I had a, a few folks, uh, somebody mentioned on, I don't know if it was the Timber King page or Sawmill page or something, asking about quarter sawing. And I'd sent messages if you guys kind of explaining the process that I do when I quarter saw. Uh, but I'm gonna try to get a video of it today if I can, if I can find somewhere to put my phone that's not blazing hot. Um, but I'm gonna show, this is a big red oak. Um, we're gonna take a three inch thick center cut slab out of this, <laughs> but then the sides, uh, the two halves basically either side of that slab we're gonna quarter saw. So first step's gonna be coming down and getting the top cap cut off. And then I'll roll the log 180 and take that three inch slab out of it and then we'll go to quarter sawing. going to do this on quarter sawn and I'm going to do quarter sawn eight quarters so I'm going to be running on my two inch or my eight quarter scale uh, which doesn't really matter for the sake of this log because um, what I'll do is I'll actually pick a target point on my inch and a half scale so it'll actually be a little bit bigger than three inches a little bit th it'll be three inches plus a blade curve so I just want to make sure that I'm somewhere Fair above the pith, because the pith is going to be in the middle of the slab. And I got to be above 14, because 14 is where my log stops are at. That's right on the pith, huh? Yeah, so let's go up another inch here. All right, so I just pulled that top cap off and you can see an awful lot of cut marks in the wood. It actually feels pretty smooth. Um, I mean, it looks like it'd be rough as all get out, but it's actually pretty smooth. So I'm thinking those might just be from me shoving that head and not having a nice smooth feed rate on the cable. I did get the cable tightened back up and hooked back up. Um, but looking at this log, I'm looking at the blade, I'm sorry. There was a couple spots where the teeth were broke, <coughs> broke off and messed up, but actually I could see a couple spots where they gotten cut also on the resharp. Um, so it wasn't a very good resharp job on that one, which, I mean, you guys know, or at least I think I've mentioned before, I take my blades to a, a commercial mill nearby here and they sharpen my blades for free for me. So I'm not complaining if they mess one up every now and then. <laughs> Anyway, so I went ahead and pulled that blade off and I'm gonna go get a new one. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and put on a brand new blade. I've got a ton of resharps I try to use, but uh, for something like this, where I'm <coughs> cutting this finished piece out, basically this for this slab, um, we'll go ahead and put a brand new one on. But first, I'm gonna roll the log 180 degrees and then we'll measure up three inches off the deck and we'll take that three inch slab out from underneath. 
I could theoretically just go ahead and drop my blade down three inches now and take the slab off, but then I have to drop my log stops. And if I drop my log stops, this thing's gonna move and then I'm not gonna be uh, <laughs> coplanar with the cut that I just made. So that's why we roll 180. Um, if the log had been big enough that I could have cut the three inch slab above the stops, if I could have gone from like 14 to 17 or 15 to 18, I would have done it that way, but it wasn't. You can see the pith, is, the pith is right at like 14 inches. It's right there at the top of the log stop. So to get below it and above it, I can't do both those cuts above the stops. Anyway, okay, so let me get my chain wrapped around and let me roll this baby over. blade on well a new resharp this morning we're gonna go ahead and take that three inch slab off the bottom now Okay, let's get this slab off the bottom. Looks like it cut pretty flat. Slow, that's for sure. When you're cutting that wide, you just gotta go slow. Which, if I had a brand new blade, it would've been doing better. The resharp's not great, but. Anyway, let's pull this top cap off like we did yesterday. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll set it to the side. We'll get the slab out of the way, and then we'll get our caps back on, and then we're gonna really get into our quarter sawing. Okay, so we've got our top half now stood up on edge. So we're gonna split this down the middle to make the quarters. Now, sometimes on smaller logs, I'll take both the halves. I'll split the slab out of the middle still usually. And then I'll take both the halves <laughs> and slap them back together and stand them up. So it still looks kind of like, a, <laughs> you know, look like a oval shaped log at that point. And when I do that, I'll basically, I'll take my speed square and I'll kind of rough, uh, you know, line my speed square up with the crack between the boards or between the slab or between the, whatever you want to call it. I call them caps. Um, Cause everybody talks about slabs these days and they don't mean sawmill slabs, uh, slide scraps. So anyway, I'll take and where the seam is at between the two caps, I'll just kind of set that up perpendicular uh, with my speed square off the blade. It doesn't have to be perfect by any means because this is still a rough cut, but I'll just do that. Most times I'll almost I'll just eyeball it. <laughs> but if I'm feeling anal, I'll uh, I'll hang the speed square up there and try to square it up. Uh, so anyway, we've got this set up. Now we're gonna, which this is kind of dicey because I've got my log clamps on it, but I can't have them stood all the way up. I could actually, 
actually I could stand them all the way up and I could take off a piece off the top that would basically be riffs on, um, take a board or two riffs on off the top, uh, and then I could roll the whole thing 180. But I think I've got it clamped. I've got them down below half. Um, I'm gonna measure again off the log. You can see I've got this end propped up three inches to, to level up the, the pith, uh, which this log didn't really have too bad of a pith, honestly. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah. Let me get this cut. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting hot and I'm, my brain's getting funny, so I need to just get this cut. Okay, so top quarter is cut off of this first half. Uh, like I said, I was mentioning earlier, sometimes on the smaller logs, I'll stand the two halves up together. Um, that way I can just go ahead and make the quarters in one pass. And sometimes when I do that, I'll actually cut a couple of boards off too. So I'll cut a few, like I said, depends on how I can get my log stop set up, but we're gonna, on this one, cause this was a big half, uh, it was all I could do to stand up one, let alone two. Uh, so we got the top of it cut off, um, just rolled it off on the forks there for now out of the way. So now we're gonna roll this one to the 45 degree mark, check it with the level. Um, and actually I hadn't thought about this. I may need to still keep this end shimmed because I technically haven't squared a face. I was gonna pull those shims out, but yeah, really, I think they need to stay in there. Huh, happy I caught that. So let me try to roll it 45 degrees up against the log stops while keeping my shims under there. This might be tricky. All right, so we've got our quarter stood up. And now we're gonna take off, we're not gonna split it in half again. We're gonna take off just this top corner right along here to give me a flat face as a good reference face. Now, this top little wedge, I mean, I'll save it for now until I get mad and, you know, kick it around too much and throw it away. But there's really not a lot in it. That's, of course, the downside to quarter sawing um, is that you just, <laughs> you have to make so many additional cuts and you end up scrapping a lot of all these little wedge pieces. But, of course, the upside to quarter sawing is it's, really really good quality stable boards and they're really really pretty so i'm going to go ahead and set on an eight quarter mark here um, and as i cut it off if my wedge here my quarter if it stays real nice and steady while i'm cutting i'll go ahead and try to drop down and cut another board or two to make that flat reference face as wide as possible then we'll roll the piece 180 degrees and finish it out. to show you guys where the magic happens so when i stood this up on the angle so i, I guess I, I don't think i've filmed it but what i do is i take my speed square and i just set it right here on the deck and i'll tuck it in against the log and as i roll or the quarter as i roll the quarter up on top of it it will actually set and and put weight on this speed square 
and it won't pop out of there. So it actually helps a lot because as I'm, I'm usually rolling from the other side and I can't see the speed square, but it will stop. The log will stop when it hits that speed square. And you can see we're right there. There's no daylight coming through. So we're dead on 45. And I just go down the line after I've checked the one, I mean, the log stays square, but I go down the line and I'll check every single beam to make sure we're stood up as close to 45 as possible. Again, exactly 45 doesn't necessarily matter. Okay, so now we take our top cap off of here. Uh, I guess I can try to put the camera back down. Hopefully it's not getting too hot. Uh-oh, uh-oh, oh no. Yeah, okay. So we'll take our top cap off of there. Actually, it was, I, I had it leveled up on the shims. So it's, it wasn't quite leveled up. So this end looked really thin, but I can get another two inch thick piece out of that. I just didn't think I could when I first cut it off. And my stops are up too high. I can't take another piece off of here like I'd like to. So now we're going to adjust our stops one more time. something stupid doesn't happen so now we're gonna roll we're gonna reference that face that I just cut because it's good dead level it should be level to the deck uh-huh there goes every single one of my log stops just fell down that is why I absolutely freaking hate this design <laughs> as far as log stops but it's my only choice since I sit on the ground. If I can ever get this thing put up on a trailer, I'll uh, try to put on some, some bolt-on log stops or some, some vertical log stops. Okay, so the way the log just fell right now, we've actually fell back into a flat saw pattern. So don't, don't let it trick you when you're rolling it. You gotta make sure you keep up with what face you really wanna reference. Now, of course, you can always look at the rings on the end to tell for sure. But sometimes when it just drops in real nice and easy like that, you think, oh, that's where I want to be. That's easy. So this again, this is not the face we want to be on. This is back on a flat saw face. Well, it would be a quarter saw face, I guess, technically, but it's not the side that I just referenced. We got to roll a little bit more. There. There's the edge that I just cut. So yeah, I've actually got... <laughs> I've got four sides to this piece right now. <laughs> oh. And of course, now that log stop is not going to drop because it's hitting the bolts. This should be the last roll, and I shouldn't have to have any of my backstops up unless my quarter has a funny knot or something on it somewhere where I'm trying to check. This backside right here, I don't know if you guys can even see me, but this big, this bigger end is wanting to stick over a little bit. Oh, there it's down. It was up on top of the log stop. I think it's gonna clear. I think everything's gonna clear. We shall see. But I'm gonna go ahead and put a, a clamp on it for right now, just until I take a couple boards off the top just to help make sure that it's not wanting to roll on the top if the saw is, is feeling too dull. Of course, my blade's doing okay for right now, but of course, if you're dull, uh, try to see what you guys can see. Y'all probably can't see anything, huh? Wait, please tell me it was all just looking at the sky that entire time. Okay, I'm gonna remake this. <laughs> God darn. I gotta get a good tripod. So anyway, we've rolled it now uh, and we've put the edge that we just cut, we've now referenced it off the deck. And so now we can basically flat saw down through the rest of this, I guess you'd call it a cant if you wanted to, or through this quarter. But you can see looking at our rings right here, if we flat saw through, 
our rings are all almost perfectly vertical. Even when you get up here to the top, my last cut's gonna be about there. And I'm still, you know, no problem. I'm still way, I'm, I'm definitely closer to, I would say closer to 90 than 60, and I'm darn sure not to 45 or, or 30 for flat saw. So now's where we finally start making some money and we just flat saw down through this the way it is. Okay, so let's do our flat saw. Let's finally make a little money. is still thicker on that end than this end and so i'm basically going to target i'm going to target cutting off as little as possible on this end because i know by the time i get to that end it's going to be wider Okay. Let's get these top two off. Wash them and show them off to you guys. Uh, power washer, but we can give them a wash with the hose real quick. That's some really pretty faulting in it. Uh, but unfortunately, when we square these up to make boards out of them, it'll probably mostly all get cut off, to be honest with you. But really pretty spalting down the edges. Some ray fleck in there. It's kind of hard to see it right now because the board, I washed them off to show it, um, but the water's almost too thick, but really, really pretty ray fleck through here and all and of course again that's that's kind of the point look there is some pith there i thought it wasn't that bad but there's some cracking out there 
Uh, but it looks like it'll all be contained in one board. So if we have to cut it off, that's what we'll do. But of course, love the you know nice tight grain pattern of quarter sawn. All this, all this sapwood in here has really, really thick and heavy ray fleck and has some really good spalting. So we may we'll have to be really careful as we, that's on the square edge or mostly square edge where the bark's at. So we actually may be able to preserve a lot of that. On the 45 edge, of course, you have to cut more off. You have to cut about two inches off to get it square again. So we'll lose character on that inside edge, but there's really not that much. There's actually a lot more character on the outside where the bark edge is at. All right, well, my phone actually did cut off. Uh, I think I was just showing you guys these slabs and I went to set it back up to make the last cut and uh, it got overheated and it shut off on me. So I went inside and got lunch. So they've surface dried now a little bit. Maybe that helps you guys. You can kind of see a little bit more of that ray fleck in there. And of course you can see it over here too. Um, but I'm gonna take these two boards off and we'll just get them set over there. I've got some stringers laying there. And then we're gonna roll this back another 180 degrees. I know I've already rolled it once, uh, but I'm just gonna roll it back again just for a little more stability, which, yeah. I don't know, maybe I don't need to. I can't move it by hand right now. So maybe I don't need to roll it, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and get these two picked up and, and moved off. One more cut to get this one off and just split it in half. It's at basically 16 quarter, or no, eight quarter. No, 16 quarter. <laughs> it's a 16 quarter. Uh, so we'll split it in half to make eight quarter boards. And then these two edge pieces, I can throw them back on and cut each one of those again to get it's going to end up being a really short eight quarter piece uh, and that'll be it for that quarter of the log um, and so then i've got this other bigger quarter and i've got the other smaller half still over there from the other cap so i think for right now I'll just finish this up and then go help the wife so let me get those boards picked up and then we'll cut the last one now there is one little other thing i'll show you guys this is another way when i'm doing my quarter sawing Sometimes I will stand it up like this. I think I mentioned this earlier on. Similar to when I would stand the two halves up face to face. Um, I'll stand a half up like this and instead of quartering it right away, if I can get a good grip on it, which I'm actually not quite at 90, but I'm close enough. Um, but I got a good grip on it, so I'm gonna roll with it. I can actually take a couple of cuts off of this. So I'm actually gonna come up here where I'm at on eight quarter and I'm gonna take <laughs> two maybe three eight quarter boards out. Uh, I don't think I'll get three. I think I'll get too close to my stops. Um, but I can go ahead and cut this top wedge off and then cut a board or two underneath. And you can see it's all gonna be in this range right here, which is gonna be really good quarter sawn. And then I'll be left with those two smaller quarters. So it's kind of like taking the center cut slab out of it is what I'm doing now. I didn't do this on the bigger half that I had just because it was too big and I I didn't feel good about how it was clamped. Uh, but I feel a little better about this one. So I'm going to take at least two boards out and then have two smaller quarters that I can stand up on edge and finish them on the on the true quarter sawn profile. But I just want to show you that. Uh, we'll see how it shapes up here. Okay, well, <laughs> I didn't feel as good about that clamp job as I thought I did. As soon as I started cutting, the whole camp was sitting there rocking back and forth. But I managed to get through it enough to get that top wedge off. And so now I'm left with this piece that is, you know, basically more than a quarter. Um, but we've already got a good flat reference face. <laughs> so rather than cut those boards off the top, like I said I was going to do, I went ahead and rolled it 90 degrees on this reference face. Now it's really solid. Um, and so now I'm going to take, I've actually set here on my... Again, I'm still on my eight quarter scale, but you can see I've got three. I'm gonna get three boards out of it, which I said before, I didn't know if I'd get two or three. I thought I was gonna get two down to my clamps, but I'm gonna get three now. So actually rolling it a little, you know, proactive maybe, I'm actually gonna get an extra board cut out of it. One of the little trick, you see how I've got boards put in there with my against my stop, my log dogs there. Not everybody realizes you can do that, and then they'll clamp up tight against their log stops or their log dogs, and then as you're pushing down, your guide roller might hit if the log's got a little bow sticking out. You see way down there on the far end, <laughs> the log actually bows out to the left a little bit. If I was tied in against my log dogs, it would, my guide roller bracket and everything right here would hit. So I just throw those little one by spacers in there, the one by twos basically, 
um, throw those in there to give me some offset off that side of the track. Everything is still clamped, it's still solid, um, but it's a way to get you some good secure offsets, super simple. Just throw a board in, you can see there's another one down there at the far end. Just throw a board in there and pinch it between the log and the log dog, and it works just the same as the log dog then. Okay, let's uh, get these three boards. Yeah, that worked well. Okay, so like I mentioned, that's my three really good true quarter sawn boards out of the middle. Um, and now I can take these other two quarters. Like I said, I'll get at least two more boards. I'll get some little thin scraps off the side, but I should get two more decent size, decent width, you know, three to four inch wide boards out of those. So those will get stood up on the i guess you'd call it the proper 45 degree for a quarter saw but that actually worked well that was awesome okay so was it worth it to quarter saw the log the big red oak here um basically the numbers i'm about to give you this is the ask okay this is not not all this is sold that center cut slab is sold that was sold kiln dried at 335 Okay, so it's still got to go through the kiln for a couple of weeks, as do these quarter saw boards. So I'm going to give you basically best case scenario, which is my kiln dried quarter saw red oak price. Now that's not my best price. I get white oak and walnut, obviously more. But for red oak, quarter saw is the best price I can get. Right now, the ask is $8 a board foot for eight quarter quarter saw red oak. Okay. So at 38 board feet on just those four pieces, just that quarter, that worked out to, I think, 304, just call it $300, okay? So just off that quarter, now it was one of the bigger quarters, $300, um, that center cut slab was 335, so there's 635. We can assume that that other quarter is just as big, so there's another 300, so that's 935, and the two other quarters that I'll get from the smaller half, let's just say those don't yield as much board footage. Let's just say they're 200 a piece. So we're at 935, add in another 400, 1335. So was it worth it for me to spend so far four hours on the mill? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's worth it. Now again, you know, and I, I, I really normally don't like to give numbers but I'm only doing it here. And I don't like to give numbers because I don't want people to get starry eyed because again, that is the ask. Yes, the slab is already sold, but the ask is on the quarter sawn boards. And actually, technically the ask on that was from my wife, which means they're not gonna get sold. <laughs> but that is the market value, okay? So if I can market them, if I can sell them, that is the value. Uh, that's after sawing, that's after kiln drying. Now, of course, blah, 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 we can go back. The log was free, but I did have time invested to go pick it up. Um, of course, I have labor in it to mill it, and I'm gonna have electricity bill and labor in running this stuff through the kiln. So at the end of the day, I don't know what's my, if I had to pay for that labor, which I do pay a helper most times that I reload the kiln, just cause it's a lot of just manual labor and it's, it would take me all day long to do it by myself. It takes a couple hours with a helper. Uh, but if you say the total value on this log was 13, what did I say, 1335, just call it 1300. Um, after you back out all the other expenses, blades and everything, I don't know, maybe maybe the profit before labor is $1,000. Um, nah, it won't, it won't cost 300 to dry it in the kiln. 
it's relatively affordable as long as I keep the kiln full, full. Like if I run it half full, of course that doubles the price. Anyway, that's not here nor there. Um, so just call it 1300. That is the ask. So is it worth it to go to the extra labor to quarter saw board, quarter saw log? Me personally, yes. Could I have flat sawn that a lot faster? Yes. Would it have sold for half the price? Yes. So, and would it have been crappier boards? Yes. <laughs> so, so to me, absolutely, quarter sawing is worth it. Yes, it's more work, uh, but it's such a higher quality and higher price product. Um, I believe in it. I love it. I love quarter sawn oak. Uh, so maybe it's not for everybody. If you're just cranking out high production and you want to put out flat sawn boards, hey, if that's what works and that's what gets you paid, do it, man. But I wanted to make I wanted to make the video and I wanted to explain that, like I said, because I'd had a couple people ask me how I quarter saw, and I had sent them kind of a a detailed description of how I do it. Uh, but now we'll have a video to go along with it and maybe maybe entertain you guys a little bit. So. Hopefully somebody learned something. Hopefully it's worth it. Uh, Y'all let me know.